spend time to prepare to receive God's word, to deliver, we too as ministers are blessed. So Father, I thank you for the opportunity to bring forth your word. I thank you for the truth in your word. I thank you for the healing in your word, the restoration, the freedom. Father, thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to speak your truth to your people. And thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Also, please help me to celebrate our Father and the Lord, Papa. Come on, let's celebrate the Lord for him. You know, I'll call him maybe God's general, amen, who God's been using mightily. Thank you for the revelation, for the insight and the direction for the church. We thank you. We celebrate you. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I also want to thank God for Mama as well. Hallelujah. Come on, let's celebrate our mother in the Lord, Mama. A bundle of wisdom and, you know, amazing support to Papa. And we thank you so much for what you do, not only for us, for Papa, for the kingdom. So God bless you. Amen. Come on, let's clap one more time for Jesus. Hallelujah. And you know, I, I was going to thank God for, I was going to say for my wonderful husband, I always say that, but today I was looking at him and I'm like, he's a pastor, he's my pastor, amen? When he, the way he came to minister the prayer, the declaration for, for Israel, something in me shifted. He's like, if you just say, I want to thank God for my husband, he's not just a husband, he's the man of God. So I want to honor our pastor, Pastor David, God bless you. I'm grateful, my wonderful husband. So he's my husband's second, amen. Something Papa said, he always blessed me. He said it before, he's like, you know, when you're, you know, you're married to a pastor, he says, you have to first see them as first as God's servant. You can't first see them as your husband because it's gonna minimize the grace, it's gonna minimize the anointing. So you have to first see them as God's servant. When you can see, who, whether it's you're related to them, your family, if you can see that person that God has raised up, as God's servant. You don't look at them as they're your own. I'm not saying, oh, Pastor David, he's my husband. Or, you know, Papa, he's my dad. Or Mama, she's my mom. No, 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 that's limiting the grace in someone's life. First see them as a servant of God. When, you, when we all do that, that's when the anointing can flow, when the honor can flow, amen? And that's what Papa was sharing, one of the things he was sharing today in the clinic. He's like, prophets, pastors, they can't flow in the anointing with dishonor. And so I'm grateful to God for you, Pastor David, for all the prophets in the house. So let's celebrate them one more time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You never get tired of it, amen? Because guess what? The world does not do that. The world does not honor pastors. They don't. So if we're not doing it in the house of God, where is it going to really get done? We should be doing it everywhere as children of knowing, as knowing the way. Some people come to church, oh, I always thank God for the pastor. Well, if you know what pastors do, the prayer. When people make foolish choices and you don't even know that it's something, you open the door to something, there's a pastor there praying for you. So they deserve to be honored and respected. Why? Especially in the house of God because there's, they're watching for your souls, amen? So if you're thinking, oh, the pastor again, we're thanking God. Yeah, let's clap for Jesus for them. <laughs> to be honest, this morning I, I prayed. I'm like, Lord, just lead me. And clearly, you know, he is because I was like, Lord, when I, when I got the message, I'm like, the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm not going to lie, I was nervous earlier, but I was like, Lord, I spent the night, I was like, Lord, just use me as your vessel. Just use, not about me, it's not about people seeing me, it's about seeing God, seeing his word. And he just laid that on my heart, that it, it's, you know, God's servants, they have to be honored, especially in the house. Because of the things that they do, there's so much that pastors do that you don't see, that you don't know, that you're not privy to know. They're not going to tell you every time that they labored in prayer for you all the time. I remember the story when we were selling our first house. We didn't know till after it sold the amount of work and prayer that Papa and Mama did to help us to get it sold. We were just seeing the effects. We were just seeing the problems. We didn't know why it was happening. We just knew that something was happening. And that can tie in even to the message today is that a lot of people can see the effects of judgment. They can see the effects that things are not going the way it should be going, but they don't know why. They don't, they don't know what's happening. They see sickness just constantly plaguing them. There was one lady I met years ago. She was one of my neighbors, and she said, every November, we're sick. Every, can you imagine, like, clockwork? Every no November, it's like sickness visited that house. Do you think that's normal? That's not normal. There are some people that every woman in the family experiences miscarriages. It's not something that's normal. So people can see it. They can tell it, and they can say, oh, this is what happens to my family. 
Oh, my, my great-grandfather was poor, my grandfather was poor, my father was poor, and now, you know, you're seeing poverty. But that is not what God wants for us. So there are things, people can often talk about the effects of judgment, but they don't know how to stop it. And that's where the blood of Jesus comes in, amen? Because anything that does not line up with God's word is illegal. Because he's already delivered us, he's already redeemed us. So if there's anything in your life, and I don't want you to just, to just hear the word and be like, oh, that was such a lovely message. No, this word is designed to see a change in your life. But you have to do something with it, amen? You have to do something with the word of God. No more just, oh, I'm just going to hear the word. It was great. You put it on your phone. You don't look at the notes. You have a, you know, an actual physical line paper. You leave the paper at church. It's not going to work like that. The word, mom always says that if you work the word, the word is going to work for you. If you work the word, it's going to work for you. And so when the word is coming, like today God's word is coming, we're going to learn about the power of the blood and what it can do, how it can reverse judgment, how we can speak mercy into our lives. So that means that this month, this week, you should be applying the blood. You should be applying it over your children, over your home, declaring the righteousness of Christ. It's not just a good message. It's we're giving you tools. Tell your neighbor, I'm being equipped today with tools of victory, of triumph in Jesus' name. So we're going to go to Colossians 1, 12 to 13. Because you have to know, and some of us know, this is, I love this scripture. It says that he has delivered us from the power of darkness. Like that alone is a meditation for weeks. That's a whole month of just chewing on that. You have been delivered from the power of darkness. I don't know how many Christians I talk to and they say, wow, the, you know, the enemy's working in my life. It's illegal. Because this scripture says you have been delivered. You have been delivered. Say, I am delivered. So that means that any power of darkness, any work of darkness around our lives, around our home, it's illegal. Because the word says you have been. He has delivered us. That's all of us. When you're saved, he has delivered us from the power of darkness. And he has translated us. We've been translated. He says he's translated us into the kingdom of the, of the son of his love. And verse 14, it says, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Hallelujah. So how do we have redemption? Through his blood. We are saved from sin, from error, from debt. Through his? Blood. Is it from our works? No, no. Blood. It's through his blood. It says that in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. We have been redeemed. We have been saved. The debt that we owe has been paid by, through his blood. Not our blood. Not our blood. If, if I cut my finger right now and this blood drops to the ground, that's as far as it's going. Nothing else happening. But, well, even if with the revelation now, because I have the blood of Christ, then maybe things will happen, amen? But my physical, just me, without Christ in me, it will do nothing. So when Jesus died, because you know what? He wasn't the first person to ever be crucified. But there was something so special when he died. There was something special when he died. Even when he died, there was, two, there was two people, one on each side. None of them saved us. I don't even know their names. You guys know their names? <laughs> Just the thieves, that's it. <laughs> the thieves. Thief one and three. Thief on the left side, thief on the right, right? So it's like, I always wonder, I'm like, in God's wisdom, it's like, because someone could say, oh, you know, maybe someone else could have, but it's like, even that very day, there were two others that died with him. And nobody else, none of their blood saved, except for the blood of Jesus. Come on, can we clap for that blood? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this blood is, it, it is precious. It's precious. And that, what makes Jesus' blood so special, I want us to just really just know that it is on a class and a league on its own, the blood of Jesus. It's not just something you declare. I always, you know, I've testified many times if there's any plane that something's happening, it's from Nigeria to wherever because they are not afraid to, to release the blood. So you just feel a little bit safer, right? But when there is a shaking, but the funny thing is every time when I've traveled and there's a shaking and we're like, the blood of Jesus, it always calms, it has to. It has to, because there's power in that blood. There's salvation in that blood. The blood speaks. The Bible says in Hebrews that the, the blood of Jesus, it speaks better things than that of Abel. 
We know the story of Cain and Abel. His blood was speaking because his brother got jealous. His brother didn't do what he was supposed to do. And he was upset at how God celebrated one and he kind of got rebuked. But you know from the weeks that we've learned, with every rebuke comes mercy, right? And so even though Cain got rebuked, there was still mercy there. He was giving him an opportunity to repent because God was like, why the temper tantrum? Why are you acting like this? Don't you know that if you would have done good, it wouldn't be this way? That was a chance for him to repent. I was looking over it yesterday and I was like, wow. He, like, he gave Abel an opportunity for mercy because he knew where he was going. And that's the thing, when you engage in these negative emotions, it takes people on a train ride that they don't, they look back and they're like, how did I get here? And that's the dangerous thing. But Cain was on his way and God said, listen, he's like, why are you like this? If you just do the right thing, which means that wasn't, that could have been an opportunity. Cain could have probably went and did it properly. He could have looked and said, you know what? Because he had an example before him, which was his brother Abel. So he could have actually been like, you know what? He's right. And he could have done the, the right thing, but he didn't. He, he stayed in that emotion. He stayed in that feeling. And then sin took over. And then he killed his brother. And then it says in verse, in verse 24 from Hebrews 12, 24, it says, and Jesus, the meteor of the new covenant, says to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Abel's blood was speaking and it was crying vengeance. So that blood that was spilled on the ground was speaking, that God heard from heaven, he was speaking. The same way the Bible testifies that it can hear the blood of Abel, now it's also hearing the blood of Jesus. That's calling mercy, hallelujah. That's good news for us. Listen, but if anyone ever says, you know what, if you go to church, it doesn't do anything, doesn't make you better, does not, it's a lie. When you're, you're coming to church, you're hearing good news. You're hearing something good. You're hearing a truth that, listen, there's a blood that speaks better things than that of Abel. So if the blood is speaking better things, guess what? We have to speak the blood of Jesus. This blood is speaking better things. Better things in our marriages. Better things for our children. Better things for our finances. The blood is speaking, but we have to apply it. As Christians, we can't afford to take on the language of the world and say, oh, you know what? Things are going down. I can never buy this, I can never have that, I can, is that the word? No. The blood is speaking redemption. The blood is speaking victory. The blood is speaking healing. What sickness is trying to come to your house? What poverty is trying to come to your house? And so the first thing to know is that the blood of Jesus, it is precious, say precious. And this blood, it's blameless, it's spotless, it's incorruptible. That's what makes his blood different than anybody else's blood. That's what makes his blood different than the thief on the right and the thief on the left is because his blood, it was, it's, it's not only just the blood of the lamb, but it's blameless, it's spotless, it's incorruptible, and it's precious. Say it's precious. And we're gonna go to 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. Because you have to see, you know, in order to enjoy the benefit of anything, you have to see the value in it. You have to. If we cannot value the blood, then why would anyone use it? People always go to what they believe works. Do you agree with that? That people go to what, yeah. They know who to call when they're in trouble. They know what to do. They think they know anyways, until all those, they've exhausted everything and then it just, you know, it fails them. So when we can sit and learn and see the value that, wow, his blood is precious. His blood speaks for me. His blood has redeemed me. His blood is actually the answer to what I'm going through right now. If believers actually understand that, then they will apply it more. If they see that Christ's righteousness is better than their own, then they're going to lean on that more. I remember years ago, I was going through uh, an issue, and, you know, it was overwhelming. I didn't know what to do. It was just, you know, there's penalties everywhere. And I remember I went to Papa, and I was really young, and I didn't really understand it. But I thank God for obedience. Because I didn't understand the account, so I just did it. And so I went to him, and I'm like, Papa, I'm going through this. And, you know, there's judgments against me and all these things. I'm like, what should I do? And he's like, just declare the righteousness of Christ. And this was like years ago. This was probably like 13 years ago. And he's like, just declare it every day. Declare it. And so I was like, oh, okay. 
I didn't really understand it. That's the truth. I was just like, I'm just going to do it because, you know, that was the counsel. So even sometimes when you don't fully understand how things work, if you just do it, it will work for you. It's like medication. Does anyone know really other than Pastor David? Because he is just like, <laughs> every time there's something, I'm like, so what's going on? He's like, so pretty much what's happening is it's going down and then the bacteria is fighting. So other than him, other than him, I, I don't know. But it's like we take medication. We know, oh, I have a headache. Okay, I'm going to take Advil. Oh, but we don't really know what it's doing. We don't know how these medications work, right? So we just take it. So for some people to be like, oh, if I don't understand, I can't work it. No, listen, if the first step is just knowing if it's in the word and it's scriptural and you might not fully understand it and you know it's in the Bible, you know it's truth, even though you haven't come to understand it, you can still start working it because God's no respecter of person. So he was saying, declare the righteousness of Christ, declare. And I was like, okay, so that's what I did. Every day I declare God's righteousness because it wasn't about my effort. You know, in some ways I was actually wrong, right? So it's like, but mercy triumphs over judgment. And he gave me a scripture, he says, who can bring a charge against God's elect? It's God who justifies. So even when in life things have not been going the way you want, or maybe you legitimately made a mistake, does not mean that you have to pay for it. There are some people that for years they're paying for a mistake that they made, and they're a welcoming problems. They're welcoming judgment. They're welcoming affliction because they themselves, they can't shake the fact. They're like, yeah, I did do that 20 years ago. Yeah, I did make that mistake. And so they're allowing the judgment to rest. But even if it's not our righteousness, it's the righteousness of Christ. And so I declared it. And even though I made a mistake, even though I was wrong, for, and that's where repentance comes in. Don't just be stink about it. And just be like, oh, the righteousness of Christ. And I have to repent. No, repent first. So I did repent. I took you know, accountability for my role to play. And then I, and then I released the righteousness of Christ because it wasn't my works. And do you know that God delivered me and worked a miracle? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The same people that said wouldn't help me, they began helping me. The same verdict that they were saying, you know what, you're, you're guilty or this or that, it literally turned around in my favor. And I walked away with no charge, nothing. That is what the righteousness of Christ does. Hallelujah. 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 And that was counsel we, I got like 13 years ago. And it's still the same counsel that stands today. Why? Because God's word endures forever. I needed mercy. I needed mercy at that point. When we were, my mom was testifying about the border, we needed mercy. And we were like, thank God we're in the month of mercy because we needed mercy. We were like all the way to Buffalo. We were singing. We had our worship music blasting. Mom was taking videos. We did not realize we did not have a passport. It wasn't in our, it wasn't in our mind. To, we, didn't, we weren't really shook. Until, and it wasn't until we were the next in line that we were like, everyone pull out your passports, and we realized one was missing. We needed mercy. Did we make a mistake? Yeah. We literally made a mistake because we didn't, and I was just talking to Mama. She's like, how could you not have, like, if anyone knows Mama, she's not going anywhere until everything's in order. There's no way she would have left the house with no passport. Right? And so, and that's why we appreciate her covering when we travel. She'll always text you, do you have this, do you have this, do you have this? And why? Because we went without her and we forgot our passport, right? So thank you, Mama. But we, we were just cruising, we didn't, and then we got to the line and we literally from here to the end, to the end there, we needed a passport in like five seconds. We made a mistake and, and we, we needed mercy, amen? And guess what? Mercy showed up. Hallelujah. But we, and I knew God was going to even, you know, every time we, when we traveled, we got prayer from Papa. And we got like, just submit to the principles of God. Get prayer. Maybe you're wondering, oh, why? Maybe it would have turned out differently. I don't know. But we always prayed the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. And so it was just, God just went straight ahead. And it was an opportunity for our faith to grow, the children's faith to grow. And then when we were traveling and going around, and yeah, my mom was saying, I was telling everyone, I was just so, I was rejoicing at the testimony. I was so like on cloud nine. I was like, my God is so good. We're here because of this mercy. Not realizing we need to get back to where we came from. <laughs> but I didn't care. I was just eating the testimony. I was like, oh God, you are so good. It was just random bursts of praise, different, different stores shopping. I'm like, God, you're good. Like I was just happy. Because I knew what it meant to my, to my kids and my niece, right? And same thing. And then when we realized that, okay, you know what? 
we need to get back. You know, one thing that stood with me as I'm like, the God that brought me in is going to bring me back. Like, there was just a confidence because it's his mercy, it's his goodness. He already, the harder, for me, the harder testimony was to get into the country. It was not to get back to my homeland, right? So, but it was his mercy. And that's the power of testimonies. And I was also thinking of Papa getting deported years ago. And I was like, Lord, and he laid the example because he got deported, he went to pray all night, then he got back into the same place that they said no. That's also mercy. But he wasn't going to shop like we were going to shop. He was going for ministry, right? But we, we were there and we were praying and I, that testimony came to my mind. And that's another thing, just share your testimonies. Because Papa would share that and share And that actually came back to my mind when that situation, I was like, Lord, you did it for Papa. He, he got denied, then he went back the same day. And I'm like, you know, we have 24 hours here and we, we're going back because you let us in. And so the power of testimony of sharing and declaring, amen? But his mercy was speaking. I was like, there's no physical person that's going to be able to say no because God has already said yes. And so when it comes to our family, our children, who cares what the devil has said about your kids? Oh, they're never going to serve the Lord. His voice is not relevant. His voice is irrelevant. Who cares what Satan has to say? Oh, you're never going to serve God. You're never going to be healed. It, who cares? It's not Satan that's speaking better things. No, he's speaking worse things. But it's, it's Jesus' blood that's speaking better things. He's already said yes to you. He's saying, I want you healed. I want you hold. So it's the blood of Jesus that is precious. So we have to hold that blood as precious. We have to hold it as precious. And number three, that the blood, it speaks. And I've been, you know, referencing that. Bl the blood speaks. So if the blood speaks, and I'm going to get ready to wrap up. But as the blood speaks, we too have to speak the blood. If this blood has a voice, we have to declare the blood over our lives, over our family, because it's speaking good things. It's speaking, it's speaking. It's speaking over your home. It's speaking over your family. It's speaking over your children. Don't speak what you see. Don't speak the problems. Speak the things that the blood has done for us, amen? Speak peace, speak healing. Speak freedom, speak deliverance, speak redemption, speak restoration. So what is it that you need? What is it that you're saying, Lord, this is not in line with your will. This is not what, I, what you said is not what I'm seeing. What area in your life are you seeing is not reflecting what the blood is speaking concerning you? That is what we're going to target today, amen? So let's rise up to our feet. Hallelujah. We're going to declare by faith, hallelujah. Because this blood, it has been made available. This blood of Jesus, it releases mercy. Hallelujah. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost right now. It's faith in the blood of Jesus that releases the mercy of God. Thank you, Lord. It's faith. It's faith. It's faith. The blood that speaks better things. Thank you, Lord. Just say after me, in the name of Jesus, whatever judgment, whatever principality, whatever force of darkness that has been pursuing my life, that's been pursuing my family, that has been pursuing our church, that has been gathering against us, the blood of Jesus be against you now. The blood of Jesus. Jesus, the blood of Jesus, blood of blood of Jesus, Jesus over, Jesus, over Jesus, my children, over my the children. blood of Jesus, Jesus is released over, release. over my family, over my church, over my pastors, over the new converts. The blood of Jesus begin to release it, begin to release it. Mako shakaye reba sakaye, mako shakaye, aye baba baye reba sakaye. The blood that is precious begin to release, begin to release. Mako shakaye reba kaye, aye ba shakaye reya, aye baba shakaye reya. I declare in the name of Jesus every judge.
judgment against you is overturned by the mercy of God. Every accusation against your life is overturned now by the blood of Jesus. Begin to pray. Lord, I want to encourage you. That is the beginning. It says we have been redeemed through his blood. Amen. It's the blood of Jesus. It's the dying and shedding. And the Bible says, if we confess and we forsake transgressions, we shall obtain mercy. Amen. That's one of the first steps is repentance. And if you don't yet know the Lord, and you're saying, you know what, today's the day I want to know Jesus Christ. I want to welcome him i want to ask him to be my lord and personal savior it says in proverbs 28 13 no one who conceals transgression will prosper but one who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy amen, amen. so if, if that is you just say jesus jesus i ask i ask for forgiveness of sins, forgiveness of sins. i believe i believe that you die that you die you were buried and you rose again. I believe you are the Son of God and that you are seated at the right hand of the Father. I ask for forgiveness of sins. I repent of every sin. I receive you into my heart as my Lord and personal Savior. I declare your righteousness. It is not my righteousness. It is your righteousness. And because of what you've done for me, I stand justified. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my heart and being my Lord and personal Savior. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. And if that's you, we want to hear from you because you've begun a new journey and we're here to help. We're here to pray alongside and to give you materials that will be a blessing to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before I welcome up our mother in the Lord, if there's anything, any area in your body of sickness, I just want you to put your hand on it right now. We've learned that these things are illegal. It says he has delivered us from the power of darkness. He's delivered us from anything that is contrary to God's word. So if that is you, put your hand on it, whether it's a cold, whether it's your eyes, whether it's your head, whatever it is working of sickness it is illegal amen so father we just pray right now we thank you so much we declare we declare by the blood of jesus that every illegal working of satan in the lives of your people let them all be destroyed now in jesus name i declare you are healed from the top of your body the top of your head to the soles of your feet i declare you healed i command every work of sickness to be destroyed now in jesus name by the blood of jesus you are healed every part of your body in jesus name amen just begin to thank God. Father, we thank oh, you. We thank, thank you. you. We thank you. Blood. We thank you for your blood. Thank Hallelujah. You for your blood. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's welcome our mother in the Lord as we get ready for our communion.
Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your word. Come on, thank God for that word. Oh, thank you. It's a word of liberty. It's a word of deliverance. It's a word of joy. It's a word of healing. A word of restoration. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We declare our thanks to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Lord. Thank, Lord. Thank, Lord. Thank God for the word. We have to learn to celebrate the word of God. Thank you, Lord, for your word. We have to learn to exalt the word of God. The word of God is exalted above even his name. Thank God for the word. His word heals. His word is powerful. His word is gracious. Fire hammer. Breaking rocks to pieces. Set your captives free. Open eyes and hearts and mind. Thank God for the word. Thank you for your word. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank God for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Seeking better things for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Oh, what is it better, Lord? We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Your blood is speaking better things for Joby. Better, better things for my family. Oh, amen. For my home. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord
I want to know you more. Let's sing that part together. Lord, I sing, I want to know you more. Lord, I sing, I want to know you Communion of your blood. I dedicate, I dedicate my, thoughts, my thoughts, my emotions, my, emotions, my, desires, my desires unto you. Unto you. I, receive I receive the blood, the blood that speaks better things speaks better than things. the blood of evil. Speaking, speaking better for me, better for me. my children, for my, children. For, my for my future, for my destiny, for Chogi, for, for, for Romy, for my ministry, for my, ministry. For my going out for my going and my coming in. I receive, I receive the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Let's shout hallelujah. 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 Some people who open their mouths, talking of shouting. Let's shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more time. Hallelujah. Come on, send the praise the Lord. Amen. 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 I want to welcome back our daughters. They've been away for a while. Azaria Shamaya, God bless you. Amen. 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 I want to remind us of Tuesday's Woman Arise for Run. We are back in Jesus' name. Amen. New zeal. Amen. New passion. Amen. New focus. Amen. It is time to arise. Amen. Make sense? Amen. Now that we are total, Amen. it's time to arise. Amen. Woman, arise. Amen. Talk to your sister. Say, woman, arise. Woman, arise. Say, lady, arise. Lady, arise. And men are welcome. Amen. The brave men, you are welcome. Amen. The bold men, you are welcome. Amen. The woman that cannot be ignored. The woman that cannot be rejected. Amen. The woman that cannot be put down. Amen. The woman that cannot and should not be abused. Amen. Come and hear what God has to tell you Amen. and tell me. Amen. Time of fun, testimonies, sharings, Q&A, and a and the refreshment afterwards by the grace of God. And please bring somebody with you. This is it's, it's, it's going to be a profound time. And I speak by the Lord. A time when you, you will leave shame behind. Amen. Amen. You will leave mockery behind. Amen. Amen. The cloak and the veil that covered you up will be removed. Amen. Amen. And you will arise in your inner man. Amen. You will arise like a daughter of Zion. Amen. You will arise in his power. Amen. You will arise in his righteousness. Amen. In the beauty and the glory the Lord called you into. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come ready. Amen. Tell your neighbor, no more shame. No more shame. No more shame. No more shame. No more reproach. No more rejection. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's thank God for Pastor Amanda for that powerful word too. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate the Lord one more time? Amen. Amen. 
So please make sure, get ready. Tuesday, 7 p.m., don't miss it. Invite a friend, invite a lady. If you haven't shared the flyer yet, please do so. And then make sure you're joining us 11 a.m. Saturday for the prayer mountain. God is doing something great. I believe it's the prayer and fasting this week, right? Yes, the prayer and fasting, so we'll be waiting on the Lord Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And so the prayer mountain will be rounding up the fasting. Get excited. Um, um, God has just been so amazing. Amen. Can we celebrate the Lord Jesus one more time? Amen. We want to thank God for our Father in the Lord. Papa, you're welcome. Let's celebrate the gift of God in our midst. Let's celebrate our mother in the Lord as well. Let's thank God for her. Amen. Pastor Madness, she did a fantastic job. Can we thank God for her? Amen. Pastor Tito, Pastor Angel, you're welcome. Let's celebrate them too. Amen. And then my good friend and minister of the gospel, Eugene, is here. Let's welcome him. Let's celebrate him. You're welcome. His family is here with him as well. Amen. Praise the Lord. So you're welcome. You're welcome. We're going to get ready to go. I want to pray for one person before I go. I saw a picture of something that sucks blood just under your eye there. And I believe that by the blood of Jesus today, whoever that is, it could have been a physical thing. But I believe it's something spiritual that they placed over you. And you're a woman, you're kind of light-skinned. By the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, the blood that speaks, whatever has been stealing your strength, Whatever is a, is an attack on your blood, is an attack on your blood. Whatever has been attacking your blood, stealing your strength, it's like there it's like there's no iron, it's like you're just weak. By the blood of Jesus today, by the blood of Jesus today, I declare your blood cleansed. And whatever that demonic power that has attached itself to you, it looks like a tick or like a flea. By the blood of Jesus today, I break it off, I cut it off Amen. in the name name of Jesus Christ Amen. I said your blood is cleansed Amen. your blood is purified Amen. your blood is revived Amen. in Jesus name Amen. Amen let's take the grace together Amen, Amen. The, grace the grace of, of the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the love, love of God, of God and, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us now and forevermore Amen, Amen. Surely goodness, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Sin will not have dominion over me, for I'm not under the law, but under grace. We love you. God bless. Have a wonderful Sunday. Amen.